This is going to be your guide to farming pal souls and technology points in pal world. So the big thing everyone's saying is that you just need to head out to the nature preserve areas, farm out all the chests, and then you get crazy items from that. Now the reason why it's taken so long to cover this is because the nature reserve is a weird area. Getting wanted and shot at by police isn't cool, but you can also just kind of dodge that and not get caught. There's also lower level areas and higher level areas, so the farming is going to be different depending on where you're at. And also by the time I started exploring these areas, I was already super over leveled, super in game, and I had like a jet dragon and stuff. So I didn't have an organic player reference to give you guys a good guide with. Since if I'm just like, yeah, you just, you know, get a super OP pal and then your best armor and weapons, you fly around, there's no threat whatsoever. I actually can't represent that. Now there were times where I'm just kind of going around collecting all the chests, not having to worry. If you don't line of sight the police, it's going to be fine. I'm level 17 right now. I have a level 12 Nightwing and we're just kind of wandering around scooping up the chest because there's tons of chests here and it took almost nothing to get out here that I just have a Nightwing. You could also get a Serpent, anything that gets you across the ocean with the stamina and then you can just kind of wander around and clean it up. And in my recent tips and tricks video, I talked about how, oh yeah, you just like farm out dungeons to get the technical manuals if you need technology points. Well, if you're in the later stages of the game where you need technology points, you can also go and farm out the uh, these areas. But uh, so far, we can just kind of go through here and loot all the chests and get whatever we want. Also, it, it effectively has dungeon loot. I guess that's a way of like seeing these chests. It's at the end of the dungeon when you get two of them. So instead of rubies, you get sapphires, but then you can also get defense pendants and all kinds of really good stuff. And there's just going to be a couple of chests scattered about. The main thing is that depending on your game settings, it's just going to take some time to come out here and then go back to a teleport. Unless you have no drops on death, then in that case, you can just respawn, go back to your base. Now, if you want to get to the Southeast Nature Reserve really quickly, you can just take a death and then respawn at the respawn point over here. So there's a fast travel point, which means you can bank everything if you're on like a normal or harder difficulty. Take the death, come here, teleport back to your base, grab all of your items again, and then suit up and get out there. It's also going to be the same thing for the nature area in the west of the map, that you take a death, go to the Forgotten Island, there's a fast travel point right here, and then it's boom, right there. Alright, so let's see how the exploration around here is. Does the Incineram knock just like instantly aggro us from across the place? Or do we just get to chill for a bit and loot all these chests? So yeah, it seems like the wildlife sanctuaries actually aren't dangerous at all, which is kind of crazy to think about. And it's also similar to the other videos I've done where it's like, oh yeah, just head out to Mount Obsidian before level 20, get yourself a huge dragon egg with the same thing. Like all you need is this dude, get a Nightwing, fly up the mountain, find a huge dragon egg, boom, Jormantide Ignis before you even have breeding. There we go, high grade technical manual. I was also... Kind of worried that my other video was like super duper wrong. So I'm like, hey, get go dungeons for the uh, technical manuals. And then half the comments were, oh, I just go to the islands. I get tons of them. But this is my second island I've explored. And that's the first time I got the roll for the technical manual. So still not super common, even out here. Also, you might have noticed the criminal activity underway. That doesn't activate if you don't touch the ground. So if you just like stay hovered on a flying pal the entire time, you're not going to have the criminal activity. I feel like that's going to get fixed at some point. Just like entering this area will automatically trigger it. So we'll see how that develops. But until then, yeah, it's not going to like spawn the uh, police and stuff as well. Also, I wonder how the wanted system is going to develop as we get closer to the full release of the game. It seems pretty bare bones. So if you do get wanted, you just return to title and come back and that resets your wanted level, which also seems kind of jank. So that's one way you can farm technology points even very early on in the game. You can also see that there's more chests scattered about the island. So it's not just the main area where the pals spawn. So if you want to do a little bit of extra exploration, you can get some extra chest rolls. We can see the same thing for wildlife sanctuary number two. And there's also one up here in the northeast of the map. And that's going to be very high level stuff. So you can go and explore that one as well. So you get this fast travel, hop over the water, boom, a lot of good stuff to find on this island. Also, tons of chests out in the desert. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about, pal souls, because you need them to make your pals stronger. Now, farming pal souls is primarily going to be done by opening chests. That It's not a guaranteed drop, but you commonly get pal souls through the chest, and the area that you're in determines the kind of soul that you get. So this desert area is going to have medium pal souls, the more lower level areas are going to have these small pal souls. Mount Obsidian is going to have medium pal souls. 
and then the in-game ice mountain area is going to have large pal souls in its chests and that goes back to the struggles i had setting up this guide that if you're just playing the game naturally opening every chest that you see catching a lot of different pals because certain pals also drop pal souls you're going to have a good amount to upgrade your like normal playthrough pals and then if you really want to max out your pals well then you're potentially in the end game where you have like a super fast pal or you get just get a jet dragon and then you tear through the desert and you hyper farm all of the pal souls you can also find these little crystals on the ground that have small pal souls inside of them they add up so it's worth going out of your way grabbing one of those opening up a chest and then stockpiling the pal souls that way now as for the best places to find an open chest there's tons of chests everywhere throughout the map I haven't gone through and made like a specific route of like, oh, what you want to do is get a land mount pal and then you just tear through this route and then you do that whenever the chests start respawning and then you get tons of souls that way. It's one of those things where like, yeah, you can just kind of fly to a fast travel point, find a high density of chests, run around, pick them up until you're bored of it or until you have all the souls that you need, rinse, repeat. The desert is super nice though, and it's a lot easier to just kind of look and create a path for yourself because it's a flat area, so you can just kind of tear through, find these like long chains of treasure chests. That's going to be really good for the medium pal souls, which can, in my experience, be like the biggest gate. That if you're just kind of playing and exploring in the main areas of the game, you're going to have tons of small pal souls. So then like going to medium and then large, well, yeah, medium, you can just like hyper farm in the desert out here. Not really as recommended for Mount Obsidian because the chests are kind of scattered about and they're going to be in like weird, jagged, cliffy mountain areas. So not, not as good for getting the medium pal souls. And as we talked about, the islands, these don't give pal souls from what I've seen, or they're a lot more rare because it's more dungeon loot. Also, some pals drop pal souls, but this is not a guaranteed drop. So we have pals like Nox, Cognito, Tombat. Now these pals aren't very desirable for breeding, which makes sense because they only give the small pal souls. It's not like you're going to have a crazy excess of them, but it is worth noting that if you need pal souls and you see like a lot of Tomb Bat in the wild, Nox or Cognito, then you should kill them or catch them and then get the chance for just getting a few more small pal souls. Now large pal souls are different because Anubis drops large pal souls and it seems to be pretty much every time and you're going to want to farm a lot of Anubis. So like the main thing is like getting a breeding setup that gets you Anubis and because of the breeding mechanics, it's actually fairly accessible. So mass butchering your breedject Anubis is going to be a really good way of getting the large pal souls that you need to make your pals super strong. Now, one thing I've noticed is that butchering a pal inside the base could lead to not giving you resources if they like run over to a workstation and you interrupt them with that. So I always butcher my pals outside the base just to be safe. And there we go. We butcher an Anubis and we end up with a large pal soul. Boom. So if you have like a major massive breeding operation and just a ton of Anubis you don't know what to do with, that's going to be pretty good. Uh, I also want to see if Merith is maybe like slightly more common or I just get lucky here and I end up with a small pal soul. Nope, just bones. So it doesn't seem like there's an exception for the small pal souls where one is a bit more common than the other and you can reliably get them. And like I mentioned earlier in this video when I was referencing my tips and tricks guide, these uncommon drops are sometimes just not worth it to farm that you can go out to the like early volcano area you can catch and kill wixen all day long and you're not going to get that many high grade technical manual drops if any so, like this is too rare to even like catch and butcher farm but it really seems like the best way of getting small pal souls is breeding really fast flying or land mounts and then farming all of the chests and then just getting them also you could get double that feels pretty good sometimes and then you can enhance your pals at the statue and see all these souls that you have in your base and inventory and make your pals super strong. So there we go, guys. Comment your thoughts down below. Did I miss something except for maybe finding like some kind of super cracked route where it's like, ah, oh, yeah, you just always do this line for the small pal souls every time the chest respawn and you're good to go. Have you found some kind of other trick to getting these small pal souls? Because to me, it doesn't seem like catching and butchering pals is actually worth it for getting small pal souls. And overall, this seems like an interesting gate for maxing out your pals in the end game. That like, yeah, sometimes small pal souls can be hard to come by. I think medium and potentially large are easier to get. So it can be really weird, especially if you're trying to like max out an entire team or get multiple of a pal stats to max. It, it can be pretty tricky. But I think it's it's kind of like a straightforward thing. And that's again, that's why I was kind of struggling with uh, making this guide and making sure it was good quality. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.